How's everyone going? Um, so, I think it's time for me to start. No one's shouting violently at me from behind. So, today I'm gonna. I want to give a bit of a talk about a better way of creating themes for the Enlightenment desktop, which is a pretty niche subject, but I figure we've got some people online that might watch this later. Selfishly, I'd kind of like some recorded docs, and thank you to the wonderful video team we have here. This is a fantastic way of making video documentation, so that was part of the goal, but also I want to include a couple of things at the end, if you use GNOME or KDE, to give you just a little bit of an idea how that's similar and how that's different. So. We will get going if the next slide comes up. And so, quickly about me. Uh, you might be able to tell from the accent, I'm from Australia. I've been at SUSE for six years now. Um, the actual reason I work for SUSE is because I started packing Enlightenment for OpenSUSE many years before that. And those contributions to the community helped me get my job. So, SUSE's always hiring, there's probably jobs going for people. Um, and interestingly, I started using Enlightenment around the same time as um, Open Caesar. So, as a bit of a guide for where we're going today, we're going to have a bit of a quick uh, guide on how to create Enlightenment themes better. Um, we're going to look at how GNOME and KDE do this. And then I've got a couple of tricks for making your KDE apps look nice on GNOME and your GNOME apps look nice on KDE. Because as someone who uses a small desktop, you get to fight those things all the time. So we're going to start with the problem. Now the problem is the Enlightenment theming engine is immensely complex, which is great in that it allows you to do a number of crazy things. It's less great in that the themes are absolutely massive. So if I can make this... I have lost my web browser. Just give me a second. So, here is the part of a theme for, no, here we're scrolling. Where's my mouse gone? Oh, there it is. So here is part of the theme for for just a button. And you can see in this case, we can make our button. This is the old dark theme, which was the default when I started working on this. You can see we have an image for a shine. We have images for bevels. We have another image for a shadow. And so in order to make a button, you have about four or five different images. And let's see how many lines here. And heaps and heaps of code and more code and more code and more code. And now there's programs for animation and so on and so forth. And at line 1200, we get to the end of the code needed to make a button. And now that's great, but Enlightenment also has a toolkit. And due to legacy and historical migration reasons, there is actually three different sets of button that you get to make. So really this one of the issues here is this is a lot of work for someone to pick up and learn and especially theme developers are often more designers than coders and so they see this thing of a million lines of code and go, I don't even want to touch that and they run the other direction. So my goal here is to make that better and easier. So now we know the problem, we can start looking at some of the solutions. So this is where my original inspiration came from. I think I've loaded this website.
at one point everything was organized on my desktop. And then I plugged the monitor in and half of it moved and the other half didn't. So they, we came up with this our enlightened um, site. So if we have a look at Uh, so here in this window, we have what was the old dark enlightenment theme. And as you can see, it's mostly gray, but there's these blue accents here. And so what this script did is it used image ma magic. And instead of having blue accents, you could create green or red or whatever color accents you wanted. And so... The re enlightened guys gave me the inspiration for the first part of this. And so, again, here's a bit of a screen set, shot of the, old, of the old theme. You can see there's some more blue areas. Um, for anyone interested, here is the image magic commands that we use. The top one allows you to shift the colors. The bottom, the second one, lets you play with darkness if you want to make something just darker or lighter. Um, and then the last one allows you to mess with the alpha channel. So if we go from there, I wrote, I started writing this script that tried to make different themes just by using image magic to change some colors and said, to go through and find HTML code and change like, the text color. And so from that, you can actually get a fair way. You can see this, thing, this one here, we've made the gray darker when we've gone for a green instead of um, a blue. And for some reason, I thought a white background worked well there, which it does. But And then you can go the other way and we've made the gray much lighter and I've gone for a darker green color here. And so you're seeing, this is where my first idea started. This has been around for a little while. But very quickly, the next thing I wanted to do is I wanted to be able to create, to add in a custom image to replace the image that was in the theme directly because you can't do everything from a script. And so when you're looking at my scripts, you'll find this IMG manual directory sitting next to the IMG directory and any image you put in there will be used instead of the main one. And so from there we can get to what was one of the older it default open Caesar themes where um, I couldn't go light or darker but I've gone for this olive green co colour and I had to do that by messing around in GIMP and changing some images. And so that was kind of the first solution, which gives you a bit of variety, but at the end of the day, it all still just looks like this dark theme and it doesn't really use any of the power of Enlightenment's theming engine, which, as we've said, is quite powerful. So this is where the next thing comes along, or well, the next idea came along, which is the VTX theming engine, I'm bad at names. That was a Git branch at one point and it is now stuck as the name for now. And so from this, the idea was to create a theme where from the start, it's easy for someone to come in and say, I want my button to look like this and drop the image of what they think a button should look like in and then all their buttons change to that image and so everything becomes much simpler um, for theme designers. And so here we can see what is going to be the default open season theme for Leap 15.4 and is in Tumbleweed. And it's pretty hard to see on the projector screen at the moment, but I'm happy to walk you through later. Um, again, this is grey, but it's a different grey. It doesn't have all the highlights and all the shiny bits. Um, I don't like completely flat themes. So this is not a completely flat theme, but 
it is flatter than the other one. And basically, we can take this theme and make it look like a number of other themes just by changing some images. So, like all talks about a project I'm working on, much of this is only half done, but from in our test version here, we can have a look at uh, not wallpapers. Wallpapers are cool, but they're not the purpose of this talk. That's Saturday morning's talk. Um, so we can go to something like My laptop has a dodgy. Uh, live demos are fun. You should always do live demos. Ah, uh, here we go. So we can go to something like this, which is completely different. This is actually an old theme by someone called Toma, and he was kind enough to leave me some artwork, but you can see here we're visually quite different. We've, but basically all that's happened is I've specified a different background here for this menu. And then again, um, This theme uses all pretty much just one image. And so, again, by just changing a few images, you can now have a mostly complete theme that looks very different. Um, I don't know how far I got Supporting this one, um, uh, not very, but you get the idea. We changed some images. This is this is very much not done. This is the one I'm working on at the moment, but you get the idea. It's much easier to create new themes just by changing a few images, and that's really powerful. So, for the next few minutes, I want to talk to you about. If you want to go ahead and change some images and create a different theme, what are the key things you should know? Because while you can just swap the images, there are some bits of code that you might want to change, and so I can give you a bit of a head start on that. We have lost the slides. Not that one. Uh. Give me a second. So here is where we are. Um, so as I've said, um, we start off, there's a bunch of images. For once, I have written documentation. It's not great documentation. 
It surprises me that it even exists, but... If you come to... We have this hacking images table. And so this is a list of all the images um, that you need to change if you want your theme to look different. Um, these ones at the start that start with E underscore, they're kind of generic images that are shared across a large number of places. Um, then we come down, you start to see you have your button images, um, your menu, um, borders, scroll bars, and something that I've added in the last few days. You can see a checkbox on the other side for these shelf images. And basically the idea here is if you add these images, the script will find them and use them. If you don't, because you just want your shelf to look like the generic background, then you don't have to add those images. Um, and so that's where we've added um, the um, images and so you can go through and replace them and you'll have a new theme. Then there's a couple of other useful files. Um, one is fonts.edc which surprisingly contains all the font information. So if you want your theme to use a completely different font, then that's exactly the place you can go and change it. Then I have a couple of other macros to find in macro.edc. Um, and so that's another useful place to look. And more generally, looking at some of the features of EG, which is the library Enlightenment uses to create its themes. Um, one thing it does is it uses the C pro preprocessor so we can hash to find things that are useful for us. Um, we can use if defs if we feel like it. Um, then some more things, you can use scripting with Lua, which I will not go into in detail, but just shows you, what you some of what you can do. Like for example, rather than working out the ratio there, I've just added a simple mathematical calculation. Um, there's animations. Other things to be aware of is in that file we looked at at the start, there was a big list of parts. The one at the top of the screen will always be the bottom thing and then they build up on top of each other as you go. And then you have these swallow content areas which is if you're drawing the border or a frame or something and there's going to be content inside, that's where the content will appear. Um, I have an out of order slide. This picture will make sense in a second. Um, I have two out of order slides. Um, so one of the things that Enlightenment does really well that other theme engines like GDK don't is there's this concept of image borders and it allows you to specify a border so you can have a nice sharp corners for your buttons or your windows or whatever and say, I don't want you to stretch those parts, but the middle part, go for it, stretch it as much as you want. So then that's why I've drawn this picture. You've got your left, right, top, bottom. The areas in the middle are stretched. The rest is not. You get nice round shapes, no matter how big the window is. Um, another, th another thing that I'm not using much in most of my themes, but you can use for high DPI screens is um, image scaling, so if I draw my button to be four times larger than what I need, I set this scale by 0.25. Um, I've changed my image border from 8, which is what I normally use, to 32. And then if someone's on a high DPI screen and they use a scale factor of 2, then they'll get even smoother corners. I don't have any high DPI screens to test with, so I haven't bothered yet. Um, and yeah, so back at the image borders, I've, because I tend to use the same thing for an entire theme, for example, eight, I'm 
if I've got just rectangles, I'll just use a border of eight. Um, I have to find in the macros this VTX image border as eight. If you were to create a theme where you wanted round quarters, like one I was working on the other day, you might want to change that to 32. So that's an easy way of doing that. Um, and now I think we're going to quickly move on to some discussion about other toolkits and what you can do. So firstly, QT and KDE. Um, this is going to be really quick. So you can either do almost nothing by just changing the colors in the color palette that if you use KDE, I'm sure you've seen. Or you can go write a large amount of C++ and have a new theme that way. One hack week, I will be crazy enough and I'll write a large amount of C++ to create a new theme because that's where my background was. But I don't expect most people to do that. So KDE, you're pretty limited. Um, GDK and GNOME, um, it's images plus style sheets. So you don't get all the fun flexibility you get with alignment where you can choose where every object is positioned. For example, one alignment theme could have your close button at the left of the window, another could have it at the right, another could have it at the bottom, so that's defined by the theme. GDK doesn't let you do that, I think. It helps if you press the right buttons. So, I am slowly working on a GDK theme to match the default alignment theme. I'm just going to bring this here for a second. So, this is the Vertex GDK theme. I'm sure you're not going to be able to see much of that. But one of the fun things about GDK themes is you come into GDK 3 and we have, we have eight different versions because they keep changing things. And every time they change things, you need to do something completely differently. So this theme has eight, if not more, versions because this is an odd version. And you can tell I didn't open this earlier. We have somewhere down here, there'll be a leaf pad. So, as you can see, if you've read web style sheets, this in the ridiculous font I've got, I was testing fonts the other day, this in the ridiculous font will just resemble a style sheet for your colors and then You have all the, this is, this has been very useful. This was partly used to develop the, I used some of this to develop the enlightenment theme as well. But there's the raw SVGs that they've done. And You can see here, these icons don't look great when they're sky scaled, but themes always just boil down to a list of generally pretty simple images that you put together. And so this is just part of the GTK theme. And that's kind of the approach that I've tried to mimic with mine because Many more people seem to be able to make GDK themes than alignment ones. So, and to finish up, um, here is a quick, simple hit, hint to make everything look unified together. I hope GDK 2 never goes away. 
if you're the GTK2 maintainer that wants to throw it away, thank you, I love you. Please keep it forever because it allows me to set these two environment variables and then all my 95% of my KDE apps look nice as if they were using the GDK theme. And so I use this matching vertex GDK theme with my enlightenment theme that I've written the matches and I get a nice unified experience. And so eventually I'll ship that GDK theme for OpenSUSE so you can all have that as well. Um, and questions if we have time. We don't have time. <laughs> I'll make that happy. We'll finish up here. Um, if you have questions, come see me in the bar. I'll um, also jump on the Venulus platform in a minute and see if there's anything there that anyone wants to discuss. But thank you all. <laughs>